Though police had to wait for DNA testing to develop, the file on the Cormac murder was never closed. Brian Shab became officer in charge of the investigation in 1993. New information was coming in all the time, and I suppose on average I'd get oh, a couple of bits of information each month. Uh, but an awful lot of it was um, clairvoyant ringing up and uh, trying to solve the, the thing for us. The police needed more robust evidence than clairvoyance to catch a killer, but they kept drawing a blank. However, Brian's commitment to the case fueled Kelly and Ross's belief that their daughter's murderer would one day be caught. You've got a lot of strength, and that's what gives you confidence in him, and a strength and physical strength. So. But you wouldn't want Brian on your tail. <laughs> I mean, I used to walk through town often and, um, you know, just see people and, you know, oh, I was always wondering, you know, is that, is he the killer? Is, um, that's the, is that the person who took Teresa away? And uh, if it is, how the hell am I ever going to prove it? The Cormac case was always on Brian's mind. He often checked over the files, searching for missed clues. The sheer volume of paperwork contained in over 200 folders was daunting. Stuff right through here is all just information on vehicles, uh, suspects, identity kits, area canvas, and you know, it's just, as you can see, just a mountain of information in there. For the people um, who were faced with this inquiry 14 odd years ago, they did an incredible job actually of working through all the information and managing it and, uh, and getting into a good logical sequence. The thoroughness of the original investigation gave Brian confidence that his offender was in there somewhere. But a clear picture of the circumstances and time frame of Teresa's abduction on that morning in June 87 meant that many of the prime suspects had alibis in their defence. Brian needed proof on one of them, and that proof lay with the science of DNA. One of the things that, uh, that Brian has done certainly over the last seven or eight years is every time there's been an advance of science, he's been there knocking at the door saying, what about the Cormac case? And, uh, and then ultimately he got the answer that he'd always prayed that he'd get. The offender's semen recovered from Teresa Cormack's body had been archived in secure storage for 14 years. The progress of science had been steady over that time, and by 2001, ESR scientists made the decision to retest the Cormack slide. Sue Petrisovic ran the tests and got a result. I think really the moment of getting that DNA profile was just fabulous. I mean, that was the moment when suddenly it seemed possible that there's a, a piece of evidence that's actually going to help. It's actually going to start a whole new line of investigation and there's something concrete. A colleague of Sue rang Brian with the news he'd always waited for. CIB Shab. Now, that was really exciting. That, that, was, that was great news because, you know, that was something we'd been waiting for for so long. What? What do you mean a profile? Bullshit. Really? I was actually quite pleased. I was sitting in the office by myself because I put the phone down and <laughs> didn't really know what to do and took a little skip and a jump and uh, a bit of a yahoo and uh, would have been highly embarrassed if anyone had been there watching me. So, What Sue Petrusevic and her ESR team had produced was a mathematical representation of the man who had taken a six-year-old girl from her parents nearly a decade and a half ago. You know, we've got something solid now, so we're getting closer, you know. Getting closer, love, and yeah, it was it was good. It was better than oh shit, is it ever going to happen? Which was kind of what it was getting to. With a major breakthrough of a DNA profile, Brian Shab could once more gear up Operation Cormac to a full-scale investigation. Well, we're going through the briefing. I just passed these around so everyone can work out why we're still here doing what we're doing. We had photographs of uh, Teresa when she was found on the beach and uh, lying on, on the slab in the mortuary and, you know, horrible photos, but they were used in all the briefings I had with new staff because they could see what he had done to Teresa and everyone was just so resolved to help catch this killer. OK, now our mission is to identify and locate the offender for the murder of Teresa Cormac. That's why we're all here. As you know, the media are onto it that we've, we've got a DNA profile. That's what we'll be telling them tomorrow that we have. 
Going public with a huge new development was an important challenge for police, because someone in the community perhaps knew who the murderer was. Also, police were looking for new names to be put forward as suspects. This was essential, because there was the distinct possibility that the police inquiry back in 87 had not put the actual offender on the suspect list. And of course that was always something, you know, niggling in the back of your mind, well, where do we go if he is in, the, in there? the initial net that we, we cast or the ones we subsequently pull in. With the help of the police media liaison office, it was decided Detective Sergeant Shab would deliver the key messages in the publicity campaign. The fact that, you know, he's out there, he's we out haven't there. stopped. We, haven't we now stopped. got enough to convict you and we're coming to get that's you. Your, that's yeah. your sort of real personal yeah. pull bit, that That's one. right. I've been working on this for 14 years. Yeah. <laughs> Don't think you're going to get away because I'm a bit slow. <laughs> <laughs> The Operation Cormac media plan required the highest possible public interest to be sustained over the longest possible time. Kelly and Ross went on homes to maximise the impact of this breakthrough in their daughter's murder investigation. When did you find out there was a, there was a new development, uh, Kelly? Well, the police have been uh, really good about keeping us informed of any developments along the way. Hoping that the killer would give a noticeable reaction to somebody, Brian gave a very pointed and personal message to him. Do you have a message for the person who may have done it? You know that we know who you are now, and we're not going to stop. So we're coming to get you, so just be ready for us. Hopefully, you know, this would just spook our offender, getting him to do something or perhaps say something to someone. As events were soon to reveal, that strategy worked. Teresa's murderer did see the broadcast and did give a reaction to those he was living with. Sadly, no one told the police at the time. But the home show was a huge success in prompting the public to report new information. Significantly, the 0800 for Teresa line ran hot with new suspect nominations. The information will take. Operation Cormac can help you. A huge amount of information comes in. It's unbelievable with the amount of information. We had planned for it, prepared for it, and looked at what we thought was the worst case scenario, and we were stretched. To help hunt down the offender from a growing list of suspects, Brian would enlist the help of police who specialise in catching notorious criminals. Everything that he ever does is all about self-preservation. Operation Cormac had a DNA profile from the semen found at the crime scene. Understanding that someday they would need to match that semen DNA with the offender's DNA, police had taken blood samples from 850 suspects during the early days of the inquiry. Um, in the first few weeks there was just, just real um, good suspects, obviously with hindsight. <laughs> One real good suspect was blooded early on in the operation. ESR began running the 1987 blood samples through tests looking for a match with the DNA profile retrieved from Teresa's body. At the same time, the publicity the case was receiving meant new suspects were being nominated by the public. Police had to get blood samples from these people too. Knowing their DNA would clear them, many of the suspects quickly volunteered a sample. Others needed to be tracked down. Are you aware we've, re we've, we've um, sort of expanded the inquiry a little bit and we're, and we're required to get blood off people and there's a person that's uh, in your rest home that we would like to um, take blood from or to come and see and we've just been courteous to ring uh, telephone you. He's 97 years old and he's in an old people's home. The Operation Cormac suspect list had grown to now number over 900 names. To assist Napier Police in prioritising their investigations, the suspect profiling team arrived from Auckland. Their job, to try and establish the likely character of the murderer. Well, this crime is a white man's crime. Yeah, too. And, um, yeah. and the, the, the hero, I understand, kind of indicates that as well. But what, what do you people, I mean, you know? Oh, yeah, I mean, research and everything that tells you and every, all the other work I've done would suggest that he's a white man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Everything that he ever does is all about self-preservation. This guy is going to, so he can survive with that problem that he's got. I would be very, very surprised if this guy would ever give himself up. 
But he was showing, he was showing a lot of confidence and his ability to keep control of the field going right through town, didn't he? She could, could easily turn to shift him halfway through town and he'd be mm. right in the there, wouldn't he? Because of A, the way he's picked up the kid without any fuss, got her in the car, the lolly in the stomach, got her to a place, and after the offence, has then dealt with the body in an organised manner. That reeks of experience to me. Even profiled as an experienced sex offender, Napier police still had plenty of people who fit the description. Only if we do all of uh, Napier for sex offenders, we're only looking at 509. If we do all sex offenders for Mariah Nui, we're looking at 185. Yeah. So, yeah, we look at quite manageable numbers. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. Carry away, yeah.